Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to do a quick update of the recent signal discovery from Ross128 which you may have probably guessed from the title is not aliens, unfortunately. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. So, as we're departing this beautiful terrestrial planet in Space Engine, we're actually going to go back to Ross 128 and uh, briefly, very, very briefly talk about what has been discovered as of late July 2017. So, Ross 128 is a red dwarf that was observed uh, by several scientists um, using a very, very large telescope in Puerto Rico. And um, when they were observing this particular star, they've witnessed a very unusual signal that they refer to as the weird, weird signal. Now, there was maybe another signal you may have heard of before known as the wall signal back in the 70s. And back then people thought, well, it was so strange and so unusual that it may have been aliens. But earlier this year, it was pretty confidently established that, well, it was actually just a signal that represented a comet that may have been in the same region of space when the scientists were looking at the star that they were looking at. And specifically, um, it was actually a frequency of hydrogen that has then been established happens actually quite a lot. And it just so happens that um, the wall signal was kind of discredited and no longer is seen as a potential extraterrestrial signal. This particular signal from Ross 128 took a lot less. As a matter of fact, it only took a few weeks to realize what the signal actually was. It was a repetitive signal that lasted for 10 minutes. It was actually very unusual in its parameters, but the frequencies used were similar to the frequencies used on Earth. Now, that's because they were the frequencies used on Earth. The signal that we saw was actually from a satellite that orbited Earth. It was actually from a geostationary satellite that was exactly in the same position as Ross-128 and emitted those particular uh, frequencies. Now, let me show you what I mean by this by going back to Earth for a second. And um, we're going to try to find a Ross-128 from our beautiful planet Earth. So, we're going to go right here and pretend we're observing Ross-128 with a telescope. And because we're observing it from the Central America somewhere, I don't know, I'm just gonna land right here. This is what we'd probably see. So we'd probably see something that would look like this. So there is Ross-128 somewhere in that region of space. And if we were to zoom in here, we would basically be looking at almost the celestial equator, where it just so happens that a lot of the geostationary satellites that basically provide services like GPS or even your, uh, your smartphone services usually are located. And so when uh, the scientists were basically looking at this region of space and looking at Ross-128 and other red dwarfs, they kind of uh, accidentally intercepted signals from those satellites that were orbiting uh, in the same region. Now, because they actually observed this region of space again and because they tried to rediscover the signals yet again, they realized that, well, first of all, nothing else was coming out of the star, and second of all, uh, according to SETI, at least, a search for extraterrestrial intelligence, it's definitely a signal that they have seen before many, many times when different scientists claimed to have found um, extraterrestrial intelligence. Now, it's not the first time we had such a false alarm, but it was definitely one of the more popular ones in the last few years, simply because... It was from a very, very large, very sensitive telescope that was observing red dwarfs nearby. And of course, it drew a lot of attention from various people because, well, because most people really want to believe that alien life is out there and we really want to find it. As a matter of fact, 
even the scientists, astro um, astrophysicists and astronomers that study various stars and objects really hope that this would be something extraterrestrial. 200 out of 800 scientists uh, and participants that uh, were trying to study various signals um, kind of believed that maybe, just maybe, this was an astronomical and potentially extraterrestrial signal. But it usually is not and rarely is. And in this case, it's just another satellite that we intercepted from various satellites that we launched into space over the years. But this, of course, doesn't mean that we should stop searching for alien life, because chances are that it is out there. The statistic, uh, statistical analysis so far indicates that there's going to be quite a lot of life we haven't discovered yet. But nevertheless, detecting a signal uh, from space and claiming that it's extraterrestrial is a little bit premature, and even though the wall signal took like 40 years to finally be explained, and this particular signal only took a few weeks, it's very likely that we're going to be receiving more and more of such signals in the near future simply because we have way too many satellites out there orbiting in the region um, around our Earth. But anyway... This was definitely a really cool um, buzz in the news, and it was definitely something interesting to try to speculate about. And uh, the scientist behind this paper, Dr. Mendes himself, wrote that sometimes projects, observational campaigns, or missions do not necessarily reach their objective. The lesson here is that we all need to continue exploring and sharing results openly. Some people prefer to only learn about these successes, but others prefer science in real time, no matter the end result. And that's really the lesson here. We just need to study and learn. Anyway, that's all there is about Ross 128, and maybe we'll find some planets around it in the near future, but for now, it's a lonely red dwarf that doesn't seem to have anything, and the planets you see are actually procedurally generated. I'll see you guys tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else, Space out, and as always, bye-bye.